Vancouver приветствует вас. Сегодняшняя тема. Commissar salutes you. Today's topic is a hypothetical war between Germany and Poland. Who would win if sudden hostilities broke out? Germany is a richer, much more populous nation. Yet in some regards, it doesn't have quite the edge over its neighbor. Plus, whoever attacks generally needs a more numerous advantage over its opponent. In the air, Germany is visibly stronger. They've got more fighters and they are more advanced. Germany also has the option of cruise missile strike, further neutralizing Polish ability to generate air sorties. But due to German budget cuts, their pilots have been flying less than Polish pilots lately. In addition, there's a vast difference in air defense capabilities. German SAMs are of generally longer reach and are more modern, even though they lack the Polish numbers. An air offensive over Germany would result in extremely high casualties for Poland. That would mean the Polish Air Force would be relegated to a purely defensive role. Poles would have to move their planes east and disperse if they are to keep some of their air forces. Still, their numbers aren't that low and Polish planes would pose a serious threat throughout most of the conflict, if used wisely. Coupled with numerous Polish air defenses, they could inflict sizable losses to a German air campaign, especially if Germans try to go deeper into Poland since they've got no AWACS support. Still, providing they don't go into headless attacks deep into Poland, there is no question German air force would prevail. Question remains, how many planes would Germans lose in the process? What about the overall number of ground troops? Germany has more, but not overwhelmingly so. One area where Poland is ahead is paramilitary. While Germany allows only government-funded paramilitary, Poland also encourages private units which are sometimes allowed to exercise with their regular army. Paramilitary, just like unseasoned conscripts, is of little use in combined arms offensive operations. But in a defensive war, especially in urban setting, it can be quite useful. Poland actually has roughly similar number of soldiers within actual combat maneuver units. That is because Polish army is more defensive in nature, lacking means of power projection and stretched out logistics train compared to German army. German army has a higher ratio of support units to their maneuver troops. Still, Poland could, if it wanted to, strike first and occupy parts of Germany. What makes that possible is the fact that greater portion of Polish forces is stationed closer to the border to begin with. Poland also enjoys quite a supremacy in number of tanks and artillery, enough so that they could hold the firepower edge in the first months, until German air power halves their numbers. River Oder could pose quite a challenge for Poles to cross, so a successful push in the south would be more likely. Later on, all those rivers would be a liability for Poles, as Germans would endanger the supply lines over the improvised bridges. And in the end, those rivers might mean no room to retreat, prompting very high casualties. Finally, whatever gains Poland might make in Germany would be temporary. German mobilized manpower, technological and industrial edge and Polish relative lack of support for offensive operations would make Poland unlikely to hold on. Germany would regain all their land and inflict much higher casualties on the Poles. Invading Germany is something that Poland simply would not do. So what if Germany would try and invade Poland? This time River Oder would play in Polish favor. The existing bridges would likely all be blown up. River Oder is too wide for quick bridges made by army engineers. Southern part of the front would be more open, as the smaller rivers there could be more easily traversed by army engineers. Still, Poland could use its initial force positions to prep defenses early and use its more numerous artillery to complicate German river crossings. More numerous tank-led counter-attacks could then deal with the points where Germans have successfully breached the rivers. Another issue playing into the hand of a defensive posture is front length. It is fairly short, and concentration of forces on both sides would mean flanking maneuvers would be hard to pull off, as enemy might be able to fully man the entire front. One German advantage would be intelligence. Germany has spy satellites and much more robust aerial recon abilities. 
what abilities Poland does have would further be minimized by Polish inability to control the skies over the front. Germany would use the intelligence edge and would track Polish use of large formations. Whenever Polish artillery fires or Polish tanks move, Germany would track them and would try to go after them, using air forces or artillery of their own. Interestingly enough, German air force is relatively weak on guided strike units. Also, their Eurofighters currently don't use guided bombs nor train with them. Realistically, as soon as war starts, that would start to change, but initial weeks or months of war could see somewhat limited German airstrike potential. Therefore, the initial months of war might provide a fairly stagnant front line on the north, with a possible German successful push in the south. Germans also have an advantage in airlift and air assault platforms. They would certainly accelerate their river crossings with large air assaults. While many might initially fail, some would help and secure bridgeheads. The terrain itself in Poland is quite flat, but it is relatively urban and there is a fair bit of woodland. There would be plenty of opportunities for Polish ambushes as Germans would advance. German logistics lines would be especially in danger and their advance would not be quick. Alongside the ground war, they would be fighting on the seas. German fleet is quite a bit more potent. Polish fleet would seldomly sail out of ports but the sea war would be of little significance. Germany has a very small sea assault force and Poland can threaten it with its modern coastal anti-ship batteries. Poland actually has more amphibious assault platforms, but as they could not hope to reach Germany, they too would stick to ports. Germany also has the option of using an anti-shipping tornado aircraft unit. Germans would eventually wither down Polish more numerous hardware and conquer parts of Western Poland. But they would probably lose more soldiers than Poles. If we are talking about a limited time war, one could say it would end with a German marginal victory. But as time would pass, after many months, Poland would lose more and more of their heavy fire support. And German advantage in mobilized manpower and industry reconfigured for war production would come into play. But after many months, Germany could eventually be expected to make greater strides, perhaps even close in on Warsaw. Their push would keep a slow pace as they defend their supply lines and battle through urban environment, where their recon edge would not be as useful. Germany would also still be pushing into a country with enough depth for itself to conduct an organized defense, even if greater part of Polish heavy equipment would have been dealt with by then. Its casualties in achieving that would still be severe, and they might even eclipse Polish casualties. In the end, the war would end with Polish defeat. But the question is, what sort of cost would Germans be prepared to pay for such a tough victory? Also, if you want to know more about German offensive against Poland back in the World War II, military history visualized it a great